Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this Tuesday, August 8th, 2023. It's about 11.56 a.m. here in California time. And I uh, got a 6.2 earthquake coming into the Tonga region. Well, just looks like it got downgraded there by one of the agencies. But there is the signature showing up as uh, far as that somewhat larger earthquake there into the Tonga region. Uh, it looks like it should stick around a 6.2 or so. Not for sure who's reporting a 5.9, potentially the uh, EMSC, but I believe that looks like a 6.2 showing up on the seismograph stations there. 120 kilometers deep, just outside of the uh, Samoa area. Let's double check the uh, tsunami warning center. I'm sure there's not going to be any, no statement, uh, no advisory watch or threat from this earthquake. Uh, looks like they did have some uh, movement there yesterday as well, 5.0. Got Hawaii stirring up out here as well. Uh, just off to the, uh, what is that, that Day Seamount area looks like. Got a 3.4 coming in just uh, about 15 minutes or so ago. Now, I'm not for sure if this is a uh, a false earthquake, you know, false reading from this six-pointer that kicked off there in Tonga or not. It is still at an automatic status review. Could get upgraded, could get downgraded, could get deleted altogether depending on the um, review that takes place following that uh, earthquake out there south of the big island also one up here north of the kilauea volcano 2.7 coming in as well looks like that within the last hour or so uh, so continue to watch that area let's see what else we got here anything else popping off overnight looks like california down here off of the Imperial Fault, showing a little bit of movement as well, uh, including a 3.6. Looks like a, a little bit of swarming going on here uh, into the Baja uh, region of the Baja California area. Now that is on the plate boundary. We'll watch for some further migration potentially uh, up along the uh, San Andreas Fault. But for now, got a little bit of movement kicking up here south of the border. Far as the Brawley seismic zone looks like some of this activity striking just after midnight a couple ones kicking up here uh, very close to the southern branch of the San Andreas fault but uh, not specifically on it it's off the uh, Brawley seismic zone which extends down here into the Imperial fault and then of course further down along the plate boundary uh, so a little bit of activity stirring up here Southern California region uh, the rest of California let's see what we got here for 2.5 and above uh, looks like that's about it. One earthquake here north of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone outside of the Ridgecrest region. 2.6 earlier this morning, it looks like. Uh, aside from that, mostly smaller microquakes kicking off there around California. Here along the coastline, a 3.1 earthquake. Uh, looks like that's 35 kilometers deep now. I think we know what sits down there into that area. That's the Cascadia Subduction Zone. 35 kilometers deep is just right around the trimmer area or just above, so to speak, the trimmer, uh, which occurs down dip into the subduction zone. Uh, I believe they had a little bit of activity there last night as well. This is from yesterday. Uh, so there's that trimmer. Uh, this movement is a little bit more further right on the map here, more inland, but deeper. Uh, if you can think and picture in your mind that the uh, subduction zone uh, dives underneath this area underneath the North American plate subduction zone itself starts over here and again that's all being pushed underneath this land and it looks like a little bit of strain building up from that uh, trimmer that's occurring down here in southern Oregon or southwestern Oregon area with that 3.1 so we continue to watch that maybe for some further movement up into the Washington area getting a little little spotty activity out here uh, doesn't look like it's around any volcanoes but uh, a few twos and even a 3.9 just after three o'clock in the morning that uh let's see here about 17 kilometers deep consistent with all these other quakes that are taking place here around 16 to 17 kilometers deep up against the cascades that is just off of the seattle fault zone which is a pretty dangerous fault that runs directly through seattle uh, and underneath Seattle, it looks like that's occurring uh, just to the east here, off of that fault a little bit. So continue to watch that. No, vol no volcanoes around this area. Um, this is definitely plate tectonic stress. We'll watch the Seattle fault, though. That's a pretty dangerous fault system. All right, uh, further to the Intermountain West regions here. 
mostly smaller microquake activity across Idaho and Wyoming and uh, same for Nevada as well Texas area getting uh, some swarming going on most of this I think was from yesterday although we did see some more twos out here out into this little specific area uh, that harbors a, a whole bunch of uh, oil pumping operations out here wastewater disposal facilities it's one right here and if you back out a little bit you can see them scattered and peppered out and about the uh, land of texas here all right moving on uh, eastern portion of the country pretty quiet minimal movement though across the caribbean plate looks like for now uh looks like that earthquake got upgraded there to a 6.3 i was gonna say there's no way that's a downgrade well that's kind of funny <laughs> the emsc uh, goes upgrade and then the USGS downgrades it. All right. Well, this may not be their final say. Uh, that, to me, it looks more or less like a six pointer, at least with that type of signature following the S waves here. Um, there's New Zealand picking that up, picking up that signature. But also, if you notice up here in Alaska, the Aleutian Islands picked up P, the P wave and what looks like the S waves traveling there thousands of miles away. But of course, it is along the same plate. Uh, Pacific plate but again that's way up there so I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards a uh, six-pointer on that one all right uh, Alaska area as far as movement goes mostly smaller microquake activity not a whole lot in the 2.5 and above today Kuro Kamchaka Japan area backing off an earthquake activity it looks like not a whole lot of movement going on there today or typical cluster zones out here across the Indonesia Islands area uh, with some advancement going on here across the Java Trench. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, and areas around the Mediterranean. Looks like a 4.2 earthquake coming in to the uh, Mediterranean area as we speak. USGS not picking up on that yet, but the EMSC model uh, has it on their site. I'm sure if this is a legit earthquake. The world map here from the EMSC model shows that... Uh, well, it looks like it got downgraded there to a 3.9 earthquake central mediterranean sea uh, so it looks like some slight uptick going on here across this area and down here in the uh it looks like tanzania area let's see what we got yep spot on there got some earthquake activity keen up there in that region looks like it's just off of the um well let's see here where this is at exactly directly dead center of the uh, country here 10 kilometers deep for that earthquake. Looks like there was maybe a smaller quake in there as well, according to the EMSC. Uh, way up here in the... Well above the Greenland Sea, along the plate boundary. Got a 4.3 coming in from yesterday. And... Um, yeah, that's about it. Doesn't look like anything newer popping up here. I'm going to bring down the Earthquake 3D globe just a tad bit for the data. Sometimes the days get, uh, the hour range, as far as the uh, setting goes, gets turned down automatically. I'm not for sure why. South America region, the cluster of smaller quakes, but uh, looks like today is going to be a day to potentially watch down here across the Solomon Islands. It's been awfully quiet here over the past couple days uh, with movement bouncing back and forth here between the Tonga and the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, really haven't seen too much movement here, but I expect that to fill in with this larger scale activity that's taken place there across the Tonga Trench area. We'll definitely uh, watch that region. Uh, New Zealand there, let's go ahead and check out the GeoNet servers and see what's being reported here. 3.3 an hour ago, some activity from yesterday, that's at 4.4. Doesn't look like any major movement taking place here across New Zealand, although that's on a hot spot of a plate boundary. Uh, in terms of, uh, well, activity that needs to catch up. It's um, lacking movement here recently. Not a whole lot of activity stirring up here. There is the, uh, that kind of looks like the uh, P wave potentially from the 6.2 or 5.9 here just a couple minutes ago. Uh, not 100% certain though. I believe it is. Right here, notice out in the North Island Station as well. All right, uh, space weather activity. See if we got anything uh, kicking up overnight. Did we get a G2 storm? It doesn't look like it's hit. Uh, that was forecasted uh, August 8th, UTC time 6 to 12. 
And, uh, well, we're past that. August 8th into the 1900 time period. So not for sure if it's delayed or if it missed us completely. Uh, yeah, so we'll just watch that and see if it does kick up at all. We're still currently seeing some proton events here from yesterday's um, X flare that popped off there on the northwestern limb of the sun. Looks like it will calm down here, uh, at least on the polar regions. Should probably last throughout the day today, maybe into tomorrow a little bit. But uh, after that, unless we get some more major flaring, uh, this should disappear. Looks like we are having a little bit of an is that a C flare or an M flare. Looks like it barely reached up into the M flare. Looks like more of a C flare activity. Overnight, we did have an M flare though, an M3.6 from 3387 out there on the northwestern limb of the sun. Those sunspots are very active now that they've uh, completely disappeared off of the uh, earth facing side of the sun. And we're left with a whole lot of sunspots. Yeah, this one down here is kind of sparking a little bit. Let's see what we got here across the magnetogram. That's going to be 3394. Uh, looks like, oh, it's definitely got a big core here, but it looks like maybe there's a little bit of growth here within this sunspot region south of this core, uh, that's trying to gain some strength that is currently facing the earth, not, uh, perfectly lined up, but if anything does blast off here, uh, that could be ge a geo effective. Um, but aside from that, maybe this region up here still looks fairly active. So we'll watch these in the coming days. Uh, current flare threat, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 55, X flare around 10% chance. And uh, again, we'll wait for this G2 class storm, see if it uh, comes about or not. If it doesn't, well, then obviously uh, it missed us completely. Storm Prediction Center here. This is the uh, outlook for severe weather today and enhanced risks across northeastern Colorado. Looks like a 5% chance out there. Uh, in there, in the area of Colorado, in the brown color, uh, two percent as well surrounding that area. So heads up for tornado potential. Uh, looks like the main threat is going to be some large damaging hail in the hatched area, mainly around the Colorado area. Uh, also, some straight line wind events as well. Damaging winds potentially above 65 miles per hour there in the dash, dashed area. Uh, tomorrow looks uh, like that activity is going to shift further to the east. Well, watch this here. Uh, maybe that might pop up here to a little bit more enhanced area or at least a broader area uh, because that's the setup down here is going to look pretty nice for severe weather tomorrow. I don't want to say nice with that, but uh, the ingredients will be there for some uh, severe storms. So we'll watch that. Uh, we'll cover that tomorrow morning. See uh, how things take place. Thunderstorm activity for your Tuesday around the desert southwest. Things are looking quite wet. Also up around uh, Wyoming as well. California. Well, it's cooler. Only supposed to be about 92 today. I still have uh, I got 88 degrees right now. Just afternoon here in uh, outside of Chico, California. So I'll take the cooler weather for sure over the 110 degrees, right? All right, folks, uh, yep, USGS downgraded that to 5.9. We'll watch California here for some movement uh, with the activity that's stirring up off the plate boundary down south. Have a good one. Stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys back here later.